so welcome back. Here we are in the ATR doing a group flight from Sierra Kilo Uniform India to Sierra Kilo Papa Alpha. I just need to go and get my flight plan. Here with me is Jilend and Brennell. Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Big thank you to V Pilot Designs for gifting me the scenery here. So it's a very uh, isolated spot here where we are. I need to check on the map actually where it's exactly. Oh, this is looking way, way better than mine. It's the default scenery. I can actually showcase this a little bit. So tower, also very nice. Oh, there's an animated person here. Nice. Squeaky clean floor. I like it. Yeah. So there we go. Very nice entrance area. Well, from outside, it doesn't that look that small? It looks like uh, you know, size of I don't know Salzburg or something. But um, oh, I think Salzburg is a bit bigger. Yeah, with the other side, yeah, it is. But uh, from the terminal, it's I mean, it's it's not it's not that small. I think the uh, this destination airport is a bit smaller. That is. Uh... Now I'm a bit of je bit jealous. Mm. <laughs> Your scenery is looking good. But the thing is, um, I don't know how often. You know, we will fly here. Now, if this is someone that is um, living here in uh, Colombia or has some other connection to it, then um, they will obviously fly more often in and out of these airports. Yeah, maybe I will create a ATR tour for Colombia, like I said. Mm. Then, then you um, have the ability to fly again here. Yeah, 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 definitely will. That would be a really cool idea. So the flight plan is ready. Okay, so let's hop into the aircraft. And I've not flown this for quite some time, um, but I have my trusty checklist here. So I'm just going to go through this uh, silently and quickly. Um, you probably know better than me how to fly this anyways. So actually, I'll go through it so that you guys parking brake is set. Uh, we have the um, power lever one and two ground idle. The gust lock is engaged. On condition levers are fuel shut off. Oh, that's here and that's idle. Uh, flap lever is up. Yeah, is up. And uh, landing gear is down. And the windshield wipers are off. Then we stay on the over panel. Um, I'm going to get myself ground power however so aircraft ground power no well there's two options to to start uh the aircraft either with ground power or so hotel mode external power is on let me just get the overlay working and then we're good to go <laughs> yeah, cannon block. I don't know how many people actually uh, actually fly the ATR still. Uh, Brennan, what uh, routings do you, do you have? I'm used to standard routing from Simbrief. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit a detour, but yeah. Yeah. I think it it it, it is a part of the arrival route. Yeah. So Opsal, then Romeo November Golf, you from Whiskey Two Six, Echo Julie Alpha, and then the arrival to. Yeah, yeah so exactly. And there is only a RMP approach. Yeah. Or visual. <laughs> One of those. Or visual. Yeah, exactly. So then fuel pump cross feed test. The wind is from 310. Hmm. And the destination. Yeah, we'll, we'll see when we get closer. Yeah. But it's only four knots, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does flying airlines get a bit boring over time? Not really. Um, routine, yes, to a certain extent. But I wouldn't say boring. Because um, every flight is, is different, literally. So you always have different um, you know, people to deal with. You have different weather. Maybe some technical issue with the aircraft. There's always difference. 
Sense. But isn't it very difficult to stay awake in the night when you take off uh, in in the evening or in the in the beginning of the night and flying the complete time through the night? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, on my last flight back from Montreal, I had to do some napping. Yeah. So I, so I did uh, sleep for about twenty minutes in the flight deck. But it's dangerous when the co-pilot uh, has a nap and then you has to have to be uh, awake and then you nap as well. Yeah, but I mean, no. So we have procedures for that to make sure that um, you know the the cabin crew will call you every like fifteen or twenty minutes. Okay. Um, to make sure that you know you are awake. Uh, did you ever consider flying something like a PC-12 in real life? Well, the thing is, so when you type rate it on an aircraft, it's, I'm not saying it's impossible to fly like a PC-12, um, you know, next to your normal rating. Um, that's perfectly doable. It's just, you know, you can do some private flying as well. Um, but, I mean, you know, a lot of people like me have family, you know, wife, children. And, you know, when you are home, you want to spend time with them. Um, but yeah, but everybody has to to, to deal with that, um, you know. So exhaust mode, just going through that. Engine two fighters were already done. So trims are all centered. Um, regarding uh, the problem to stay awake, I'm wondering that in uh, the airplanes um, are not the switch like in the um, trains are. It's called dead man mm -hmm. button like that. And they have to push every 60 seconds or so on a button to make clear that they are awake. Yeah, but they, they have a pilot alert on, on the Seven, eight, seven, seven, four, seven, and so on, triple seven. Ah, okay. So I think it's after, it takes a bit longer. I think it's like 35, 40 minutes it comes on. It's like a oh, whaler. so long. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, it will alert you. So let's have a quick look at the weather. No results. Okay. Uh, So here we got uh, variable five knots, QNHS 1016, uh, bar row set 1016, 30 degrees, my god. Cool. Where, uh, do, you, where do you got the, the weather from? From a chat. <laughs> oh, from chat, okay. Yeah. Microsoft Flight Simulator says 33 degrees, okay. wind calm, I had 1007 okay. uh, hectopascal. Okay. Because I just checked the weather, it had no weather. And now... Yeah, you're right. You see the, use yeah. the weather app from, from uh, Flow. There you can see what the weather is, would be. Uh, was an update for the ATR recently? Not that I'm aware of. Because I have it in the uh, store and I checked the store today and there was no update for it. There was no update for a long time. So let me just press B. Yeah, it should be 1007. That's, that looks better. No. Okay, That's weird. Oh, because I... Oh, disregard. Yeah, I put in the wrong identifier. It's... It's... Uh, uniform India. Not skip. Skip was the last airport we were at. I thought I already pulled that automatically from from the. Okay, all good. So alternative set. Let's prepare. So what we got to do? Position in it. So in it it is. Uh, that's good database. Um, then. Take the position from the GPS. Okay. Then return flight plan in it. Route. 
Now, was there a simbrief upload function? There is, isn't there? There is. Um, so it, I just enter the, the flight number, or what do I have to do? Um, go to a, the EFB, go to the tab flight plan, and there can you can import flight plan and the fuel and weights. But you first you have to log in maybe, enter your um, flight uh, your your sim brief number. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, you're right. That worked fantastic. So set flight plan. Set fuel. Set payload. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. Nice. And then go as well to. Uh, where was it? Like payload on the in the pale on the payload page. Mm -hmm. You need to load aircraft and set takeoff. Okay, load aircraft. So zero fuel weight. We said it's going to be twenty point three. That's that's close enough. Fuel. So it's two point five. We need two point five. Yeah. Start loading. Crosswind. Actually, let's put that a little bit more. Twenty-two. No. Three hundred. Cool. Set so take off. Right. So that's all done. Cool. Uh, departure. Which one are we, are we taking? Three one. Yeah. Three one. Three one. Yeah. So three one with the departure upside one Bravo. Upside one Bravo. There it is. So that will take us Arnaf Tilpi. So there we go. Um, Opsal on Bravo. Execute. So Tilpi overfly Atomo 4200 or more. And then Orimi. There we go. High terrain there. Uniform India 905, 40,000 above. And then Opsal. Also 14,000 above. Cool. And then flight plant route, Sierra Kilo Alpha. I'm going to take the RNF 5 Delta. Okay, interesting. So let's have a look. That's your rival routing. Arnaf. Uh, there's the airport. Okay, that looks interesting. <laughs> that looks like a very interesting approach. We'll see. So. And so the arrival, it says. Echo Julia Alpha one kilo, okay. Transition non okay, execute. That looks good. Routing is inserted. Transition take us runway is it root. So then we go uh, back to data. Um in it performance so cruise um, cruise altitude 300 feet is a bit low <laughs> and 150 could also be a bit low right let's go 190 yeah flight 190 
then we go to weights. That's all set automatically. Reserve, 900 kilograms. Trim, 1.1 up, okay. Now it says um, also performance, performance in it, cruise. Turn performance. Wait. Fuel flow. No. So performance. Take off page. Transition. Eighteen thousand is correct. And so those are the speeds. Thirteen, thirteen, seventeen. And then performance cruise page, cruise page, headwind, uh, mean wind is 086 at 15 or something else. Let's put 090 at 15. Cool. So that's all done. Fantastic. That's all done, that's all done, that's all done. That's just the same page, really. Um, good, so runway course and heading. We're almost finished, guys. So the runway heading is 308. Zero eight is set. I'm going to set one nine zero straight away. She landed taking off right now. Okay, uh, good flight. Looks like it has a different scenery. And a good flight. Yeah, made it. Made think, it. But I think the, the, the landing runway is a bit shorter. <laughs> Not sure, but uh, we'll see. Oops, one nine zero. Flat three takeoff at Toga. Nice, GG's. Well done. Um, so guidance heading select. Landing runway is not that short. It's uh, five thousand six hundred feet. Okay, well, that's, that's okay then. Nav arm, flight guidance heading select. VNAV arm. So LNAV arm, VNAV arm. Cool. Good. So let's have a look here over the items. Let's clear that. Then procedure required. Um, then let's go ahead. Good. Final preparation. Parking brake is engaged. Oh, hang on. Altimeter set and check. Landing elevation. Okay, so landing elevation is uh, 8,200 feet almost. Really? That's crazy. Um, and I, where did I see that again? Landing elevation, landing elevation, landing elevation, landing elevation. Landing elevation. Where, where do I see the landing elevation? Anyone know? Uh, Pisco, 
Yeah, of course you can ask. Um, I actually lived in the UK, in England, for a very long time, five years. And actually, I don't have a German Abitur. I have an English, I have English A levels, and that's where my my English comes from. Oh, nice, James, on the selector under the gear panel. Oh, here we go. Gee, we got a real world ATR pilot. GGs. <laughs> Oh, let me get the uh, jingles working. And Mark, oh, sorry for the late call up. Mark, thank you so much for gifting a sub to MCK. Apologies for missing that earlier. Thank you very, very much, Mark. Kind, kind man. But I mean, I did fly from East Midlands, right? <laughs> Just saying. Hey, Avenger. Um, so that's that. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, that's true. True Avenger. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that uh, before. Right. Landing elevation. Uh, 8,100 seems correct. 8,174 is on the flight plan. Cool. So, um, FMS Comnaf set. Is anything? Well, it's an hour of departure, isn't it? So, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, fuel quantity, fuel on board. So, we've got. Um, 2,450 kilograms checked. Engine fuel used reset. Memo panel checked. And it should be power management takeoff. There it is. It's takeoff. And that's the procedure completed. Next is before propeller. James, so, so I hope you bear with me. I hope uh, you're not going to go cringe because I'm not a real world ATR pilot. So... Uh, <laughs> Okay, let's do the starter with the hotel mode startup engine too. I quite like that. Now, I know we have electric power, so we don't really have to do it that way, but we'll do it. So let's close all the doors. So aircraft, chocks. Oh, no, we need the power. Sorry, we need the power. Um, then, so everything's closed. Wing light goes on. Then we've got prop brake on. So for that, prop brake is on. Illuminated fuel pump two on. Engine start switch A and B. Then we clear with the hey Hayden, how are you doing? We'll of course uh, make sure that everything is clear, which it is. And then we go and uh, start up the engine. Now the propeller will not turn. So engine two start on. So where's my system page again? Uh, Okay, let's. So now I'm going to put fuel in. Oh, there's the engine page now. Oil pressure rising in the green already. So engine to wait until that's stabilized. Ooh. So apparently it's okay if it goes into the red area for a short period of time. It should come back. It's very Walmart site, so... The external power off if used. That's, that looks very hot still. Um, so I will try to take off. Okay, have a good flight. 
so before propeller rotation checklist, CDLS on, F mistake of data confirmed, trimmed set, tailprop is on board, doors closed, seatbelts are on, beacon is beacon is now on. Procedure completed. We have a look for a Brennelt takeoff. Successful takeoffs. Excellent. So have I. So then we want to have the hydraulic pump on so that we can get the prop brake off. And then put this to auto. And now the prop will start spinning. And that should bring EGTs down as well. Yeah, there we go. Hayden, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Good. There we go. Start engine one. So wait for 10% NH. Here comes fuel. Now this one doesn't have a rotor brake. Now it comes to auto. Waiting for the uh, NP to stabilize as well. Oh, you're right. Yeah, fuel pump should be on, of course. Thank you. Good catch. Yeah, now stable. And then we continue with the taxi flows. So probe heating on. anti is not required. It's hot enough. Anti-skid test perform. Looking good. No steer is on. Flaps 15 for takeoff. Transponder set and on. Com. I'll survive. There we go. Uh, on TCAS auto is set. Flight guidance checked. Wing light as required. Then we'll do a checklist. Recall checked. Cockpit com hatch closed. Never opened. Seal one two is auto. Anti eyes off. TRU check and on. Transformer rectifier unit, I think it's called. And the skid test was performed. Flaps 15. And uh, nozzle steering is on. And that's that. Cool. Thank you much, survivor page. Exactly. So taxi lights, takeoff lights on. Brakes, pack brake release. Can we do a power back? All right. Maybe not. <laughs> At uh, LR Aviation, how are you? Welcome. Mind your head. Ah, this turns on the spot, doesn't it? Wow, GG's. 
So brakes checked. Gust lock coming off. If I can find it. Oops, that's my controller. And then take off tests perform take of conflict test performed taxi checklist taxi take of lights on brakes were checked guidance fma is checked take of conflict test performed so let me go and get my map selection on nav display So take a briefing, no changes, flag controls were checked, transponder set and on. Weather radar as required, it's not working here any. Oh. Hello. Uh, oh, boy, that's a long freeze, blimey. Brennell, do you have some long freezes from time to time? Um, not in the last days. Weird. Yeah, that was a really long freeze there. So now I have to remember what to do for takeoff. Um, so cabin crew advised, landing lights, strobe lights on. Air conditioning pack flow low. Okay. That's normal. And uh, everything's centered. Trim looks good. Uh, elevation got a flu. Okay, sorry to hear that. Like two weeks. Okay, yeah, sometimes the flu does take time to, to get... Um, uh, if you don't set the speed auto, you will not get V2 target and climb speed. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, where? Auto? Where do I have to put that? No, so Ark, uh, if, if for any, if, if um, PMDG should actually release the 777 from Microsoft Flight Sim before Cross the Pond, I mean like one or two days prior, if they don't release it, then I will fly the 747 in a P3D. But yes, if they release in time, then I will I will fly the 777 in Max Flight Sim, yeah. Next to the PFD. Ah, okay, here. The thing is climbing very weak here. I don't know if I will make the, the, the mountains in front of me. Okay, well then do a, do a circle. Maybe. Okay, thank you much for the input. So that's now magenta. Fantastic. Cool. Before takeoff, takeoff briefing is completed. Gust lock is off. A flight control performed. Oops. Boost function not required. Airflow is norm. Cabin crew is advised. Engine bleed is on. Exit lights on. Lateral flat deck bar center. Rudder cam centered. Looking good. I think we're ready, right? Cool. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. Righty. So, positive rate of climb, gear up, autopilot engaged, your temper engaged, lights off, acceleration, power management, climb, flaps up. Okay, that should be okay. Let's go. Do I have to press go around here or. No. <laughs> that was the wrong one. Don't press go around. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, 
that was the right gear up. So, so NAF, VNAF, indicated airspeed. Good, so we said we want to have climb power. Wow, that's a quick reduction there. Climb power. I think I have a bit of rudder trim to the right. So flaps coming up. Autopilot your damper on. Yeah, we did overpower the engines just a tad. <laughs> just a tad. But we're good. We are climbing. Now, what's the best climb speed? Let me just have a look again. Uh, best climb speed. So, gear is up. Flaps are up. Climb power set. The auto is on. Taxi light off. Is it 170 roundabout? Oh yeah, you're right. I should be, I should be here, right? Is it is it the white area, the ramp? Yeah, probably. Thank you much, James. Best rate is 170. Cool. So that's what we have. And hopefully we have uh, enough power to clear those altitudes. So we have to be 4,200 above there at Atomu. And then Orimi 11,000 above. Pooh. That's here. Okay. Okay, so 116 above 42 and 117 is 72. Nice. James, uh, situation where you can't make 4,000 above restriction out of Heathrow and this thing. Oh, okay. Wow. So you really have to watch that. Good. After take off checklist, we have gear up, flaps zero, power management is climb, power set, engine bleeds are on, taxi take off lights uh, off. Yeah. And the rest passing 18,000. So, Reynold, how's it looking on your side with the altitude? Yeah, I barely made uh, the uh, the mountains. Now I'm on the way to the um, cruising altitude. I'm climbing with 1,000 feet per minute mm -hmm. at 170 knots. It's not that much. Okay. Can you ask your viewers, Blackbox, if the Wiener function for the descent is working here? Yeah, guys, uh, I think the VNAV per se, yes, Brennald, but I think um, it the, the uh, to fly the final approach in VNAV, that doesn't work properly. Yeah, maybe, but um, I'm interested to uh, to do the descent in VNAV, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it works because the, I have the BAE 146. It has also has a VNAV button and it does not work. 
Yeah. And not not only in the in the simulator, it's in the real plane the same. Okay. It has a button, but it does not work. Okay, James says uh, you can in non-icing reduce speed to white bug plus ten. Okay, so that would be uh, so we're gonna go manual speed selected. So let's go 160, 158 somewhere. Okay, thank you. Um, and James said, I'm not sure if you heard the question. So in the real aircraft, does VNAV function work for the send? Because I think here I got it working last time. Uh, Jurus, how am I finding the ATR? I like it. It's just... I guess you have to fly it more often to get really comfortable with it. And uh, like I mentioned, sometimes uh, at the moment, I just I'm a bit hard pressed on time. But it's a very nice add on. Uh, so James says, Brennold, uh, yeah, it does. And you could do a coupled RP approach for approach, approach on final. Yeah, so James, I tried that the other time uh, on in the Canary Islands and that didn't work. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if I did something wrong, but I think I pretty much followed everything to the book, but uh, that did not work for me. Have you tried it here in the sim, James, by any chance? Maybe sometimes the airport even does not uh, support the RMP coupled approach. Mm, well, I mean, if, if it has LNAV VNAV as a minimum, then I don't see why it shouldn't. Interesting, today it doesn't even say anything about LNAV or LNAV enough. I mean, but then it's an RP visual anyway, so... You're going to have to stay clear of the terrain visually. Oh, I even can see a distance to top of descent. Mm -hmm. Very nice. In the proc page, yep. progress page. There you go. Uh, sim is so buggy and some normal ops seem to work differently. Yeah, okay. Yeah, James, thank you much. Yeah, Winky, we'll try. I, I'm sure I got the, the Vina function working, but again, on the regarding the final approach, I, I, I couldn't get it into the uh, approach mode. It wouldn't descend. Right, there's the mountains that we have to climb above. What plane did it like more in real life? 747, 820, 747, definitely. <laughs> I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy the 320, but I mean, if you give me those two options, it, it's 747, 100%. 100%. Beautiful that was an easy question. Yeah. What do you that, like more, 787 or 747? Oh, that's a tough one to answer, though. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I would still prefer the 747. I mean, you know, as as a from a pilot point of view, flying it and and having emotions with it. But the 787 is a nice aircraft. I will say that it it, it really is a nice aircraft. But it's not as emotional as the 747, exactly. the queen of the skies. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I've not flown the 350 in right No. Yeah, I, I, I've seen the cockpit. It's nice, yeah, but I've not flown it in real life, no. I really hope at some day we will have a dash eight as well here in the simulator. Interesting that we haven't got anything like that up to this point, yeah. right? Some people say they are working. The Majestics is working on the on the dash eight, but no information at all from them. Yeah.
Yeah, I think Sierra Kilo Alpha is going to be tough. We just made 11,000. So now 14,000. Poof. I would have to look for the real world weather. But we're getting close to that um, white speed. Of plus 10, he said. All right, 14,000 for the next waypoint. Come on. When we reach top of descent on the NAV display, we tend to use vertical speed initially, and then once VNAV profile, then on profile, then engage VNAV. Okay, so Brainalt, uh, initially you should start descent with vertical speed, and once that's stable okay. and you're on the path, then, then press VNAV again. Okay, thank you. I will try. But right now it's, it's doing things very nicely, following nicely the path. Doing our best to climb. Yeah, so now it's actually showing me here an amber. And I guess so we are going to bust it a little bit. But uh, we should be alright. Now, of course, in real life, I would be somewhat alarmed. <laughs> I don't want to be busting minimum altitudes, especially when terrain is that high. But luckily, we are our VMC. See, what would you do do in this situation well i mean if if i tried everything else regarding you know trading some bit of airspeed for altitude um i would check if it's really uh, obstacle limited contact atc and if anything i contact ATC and say I'll, I'll do a 360 here at present position to climb okay and is it a big issue to bust the altitude constraints there, or is yeah. it only to your discretion? No, 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 no. You have to make sure that you keep to all of the altitude restrictions, because you never know if it's obstacle limited or um, if it's state prescribed. You know, you've got some restricted airspace, maybe military airspace below or something, firing yeah. range, whatever. You never know exactly what's what's causing the limitation. Yeah, maybe there is a approach route there directly yeah. below this, this, uh, also this waypoint. Yeah. yeah, exactly that. So, Sam for Sam is a really beautiful airplane, but I think I had to decide it would take the 787 because I'm such a fan of really modern systems. Yeah, so a lot of aviation, that, that's really the key. Um, so the 787 definitely is the next generation of aircraft from Boeing. And, um, and like I said, I mentioned the, the fly-by-wire system. Um, is very nice. It's it just makes everything feel so much more stable and um, and then the uh, the avionics, same thing. It's it's just so much more modern and that makes it of course a lot easier and and, and you know comfortable to work on. So let's go back to manage speed fourteen thousand. Got that now, so we're safe. Um, a circle to climb <laughs> instead of circle to land. Yeah, exactly. You can reduce to white buck as long as you stay on the low bank. Okay, so 70 degrees. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's not this bad in real life. Okay. <laughs> well, that's Microsoft Flight Simulator for you. Yeah, but we're doing good now. All fine. What is the normal cruise speed in this plane here? I'm actually on flight level 190 with 190 knots uh, indicated. It mm. looks very slow for me. I would me. just I just put the power management to cruise and then I would just let it accelerate. So 270 knots true airspeed. 270 true airspeed. Okay. 272. Let's have a look. Where is the true airspeed? Enough display. Top left corner. Yeah, I'm on 260 through air. Oh, there we go. So, so we're just passing Opsal now and uh, looking at root altitudes here. Yeah, highest grid is 17.3 later on. So, yeah, we, we do need to climb 190, 100%. Although the higher terrain seems to be uh to the east here or the south um Blackbox, how can i switch the navigation display to see the route like you have mm -hmm. if you hover do you have if you hover your mouse over the display do you have to 
showing map, system, etc. No, I don't have this. Okay, um, so go to your there. options. So options in the oh. EFB. And EFB, okay. Uh, and then bottom right corner, go to next page. Next page, yes. And then click spot overlay. Make sure that's, ah, that's interesting. Ticked. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. And then, uh, okay. yeah, now we have that. You get little little uh, displays. So, and then you go to map, and you have. Hang on, on somewhere it shows map. So map. Oh, map. Yeah, exactly. So map and nav display is the circle. Yeah. But I, when I'm in the nav the display, I can't see the route. I only see my plane. Mm. I can see I can see both. Okay. So you can increase range as well. Map mode, nav display, performance oops. There's a for format button below, maybe I have to press there. Ah, format button. Mm -hmm. But also I can't see the route, only my plane and the circles around me hmm. okay and that's a bit weird because i can see the routing on my side that's all fine so james says you leave the power management climb until reaching your cruise speed bug then set cruise okay only in the 42 is set cruise straight away okay if you rotate the knob on the bits below the PLS with SD, etc. buttons. Uh, below the power levers. Welcome aboard the Captain Black Box Duo Channel Experience. Could new subscribers please make their way to the first class cabin where complimentary drinks, ah. snacks and premium flight infotainment will be served. Thank you. Okay, Brennan, if you watch my stream, have a look yeah. where... So, you see bearing one, bearing two, for example. There's a rotary knob there. You can That changes the, the, the modes. Ah, okay. So from map to center to plan mode. Have a look if that somehow brings back the... Uh... Scotty, thank you so much. Another gifted sub. That's really kind, Scotty. Thank you so much. Melvin, please say a huge thank you to Scotty Dotty. And if you don't know Scotty Dotty, please make sure to check out the stream on Twitch. Thank you so, so much. And Melvin, hello to you. Oh, okay, now I have it. Okay, cool. I pushed the button um, down there where you was, uh, and on the na November Delta navigation display button, and then it showed the route. Okay, excellent. So I'm just going to go help the aircraft climb a bit more. 190. Thank you much, James. Cool, cool inputs today. The max altitude, James, was at like 22,000 feet or something. Uh, what's that point to your right outside? Hold on. Sorry, which point? Right outside. Yeah, it's hard to get above... So 250 is service ceiling, but it's hard to get above 220. Okay. Uh, sorry, so CT90, what's that point to your right side? Point to your right side. From the cockpit, at 2 o'clock from the... Oh, this one here. This could be the microphone, cockpit voice recorder. If that's what... Oh, oh you mean those dots? Those dots are um, for alignment of your seating position, eye position. So you would try to get into a position so that the red ball covers the white ball. That would be the, the correct scenery. 
Oh god. <laughs> I'm like dot scenery, two o'clock. Oh, you mean this? Oh, this is a scenery mismatch, mesh issue, really. Otherwise, it's hard to tell what you mean. Oh, there. Okay, that's just a mesh issue. Because uh, here at the moment, Microsoft Flight Sim has not um, done a world update. So this is still very crude kind of uh, mesh information. So scenery elevation um, information. Wow, so here we go. So here we go, 180. Uh, st standard set. Just about to reach the cruising level, my god. Uh, Sierra, the thing is, in, in The Sims, I found it almost impossible to set a correct seating position to, by aligning these balls. It, honestly, in real life, that works very nicely, but here in The Sims, it has to do with zoom factors and whatever. It, it's just, it never seems to be correct here in The Sims. That's just my my experience with that. Right, I'm going to go and force that into vertical speed trying to get it up to 190. Nope, a bit of speed. Ah, oh, cage land, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can use basic pitch mode. Hang on. Um, so pitch hold. And then you go and dial up the pitch a little bit. Hey, Peter, good evening. Yeah, I remember we did that. I think we did that in a dash eight as well here in the sim. Is the ATR good? Um. I, I think it's good, yes. Um, it, you know, if you enjoy these kind of aircraft, I'm, you know, it's pretty cheap, isn't it? Like 20 euros or something. So for that price, definitely. Right, altimeter set. Um, it still has some bugs, but all in all, I mean... But yeah, I mean, you would only fly it A to B. I mean, you wouldn't really do too much. So sometimes even cheaper than 20 euros. Well, there we go. And so it does give you some nice options, right? I think it's good to fly with this to shorter to airports with shorter runways mm -hmm. where you can't land with a 320 or so. Yeah. Just gives you some more options, yeah. But I think black box you should also try the BAE one for six. Which is <laughs> yeah. also a nice aircraft. I I believe you. It's just again, I, I need to find the time to, to yeah. get my head around that. After your innovation works yeah. then yeah. you can try. Yeah.
<laughs> you found a five foot Microsoft scenery spike in the Amazon jungle. <laughs> it will look a bit weird, yeah. So true ASP 232. So now that we reach uh, 190, we're going to leave the climb power set. So now the command at speed goes up a bit. And now we just wait until we get to about 270. Uh, flat deck to sim and v1 uh, both like the uh, the one for six nice yeah i've had i've had many good things um about the 146 yeah but again i you know it doesn't make sense to to fly an aircraft here on stream if i don't know you know if i don't even have the slightest idea how to fly it i mean you guys are always very nice and helpful no doubt but i'm sure you know if i don't know anything about the aircraft it's going to be really hard and annoying for, for some people. Uh, Peter, Glacier Seed Flight ATR. Yeah. Again, for that price and for what it, what it has to offer. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? And there we go. We are accelerating. 247 now. Slowly but surely. deviation uh is the deviation on the vnav 2 uh vnav page 2 uh plus 19 degrees okay so that that explains a lot right So, um, progress. Page two. Page three. Okay. So, destination at 22.38. Wow, it's an hour still. Is there any chance to shortcut? <laughs> I think we could go to Adnock, Echo yeah. Delta, Rambo Oscar Golf, because this is uh, shortly before the top of descent. Yeah, good idea. Yep, 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 that does shortcut a bit. Cool. Knock and then we on the arrival routing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Seventeen thousand above. Thank you much, Jelen. Kinich at arrivals one zero one five. He's probably already there <laughs> with the Airbus. <laughs> so we are now two fifty knots. Okay, let's go cruise power then. I guess there's not much uh, change there though, is it?
Good. Um, Vina. Next page. Transition 18,000 is correct. Uh, temperature conversation on. Uh, doesn't work. Performance. Um, did you do any, anything special, Reynolds, to, sh to get the top descent showing? Oh, no, it's, I'll get this. I see it now. It's showing. It's past Ednock. Okay. Fantastic. Cool. Yeah, maybe it has to do with... I mean, we know Microsoft Flat Sim has not the best aerodynamic and environmental simulations, so maybe that's why it's dropping a bit. And so the whole thing regarding, you know, drag models, um, especially, you know, between low altitude, high altitude, it's just... Microsoft is just a bit off, so... I... I don't. Uh, I, I I'm aware of it. I, I don't worry too much about it. I just accept it. It's just the way it is. Yeah, but James, is, you said you would expect 270 true airspeed, correct? I'm currently with 253, so. Good. Let's have a look for the procedures. ATR flow pattern B. First page, it says uh, cruise set, engine display monitor, fuel on board, check. So we've got two tons on board still, that's fine. Before top descent, destination eight is check, com check, landing elevation check, it's all set. Decision height, minimum descent. Is nine six seven zero. How? Wow. Well, okay. Let's see how much I have to dial that in. Oh, actually, that's, that works quite nicely. So it does go pretty quickly here. Yeah. Six seven zero. Oops. Set uh, approach page set. So performance approach. So the approach is going to be one one six. Flat full landing, ground wind. I think someone said it was about uh, seven knots or something. Let's try and have a look. So it is a on of approach, so we're not going to set anything regarding ILS, etc. Has no stations there at all. It's just a complete on of airport. Interesting. And then let's just put this to map mode, format. Let's try that again here. Yeah, there we go. So that's nice. Et knock, we come around the corner. Those waypoints four zero three. 
So four miles in front of the runway is the missed approach point, which is uh, past 405 from Dad's visual missed approach waypoints 406, 407, and then we go towards SEP2. Okay, that's all set. Good. That is all done. So just wait until we get to that next waypoint. T car set below. So survive. T cars. Can't set that to below. Okay. Very narrow runway, yep. It's in the NAF menu, okay, NAF menu. Ah, there you go, thank you, below, cool. So let's put that to rain mode. Excellent, 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 okay, nice. Terrain data, what's SVS? Ooh, ooh, hang on, Reynolds. Did you know that? Oh, what? Go to your NAF display. Or actually, yeah. go, go to the NAF button. NAF button, yes. And then you have four options. VUR, ILS, ADF, ND only. And then the PFD SVS. Click on that. Yes. And then put SVS on. And now you have... Oh, on your prime flight display, you have a 3D map. That's very interesting. Wow. So even if you in IMC, you would see the terrain that way. How cool is that? It's a very modern aircraft. Nice. nice. Is this the aircraft still produced today? Good question. <laughs> James, yeah, it's one of those things where, yeah, airlines save money <laughs> on these systems saying, ah, the pilots don't need that. It's not necessary. Hey, Hannes. So uh, yeah. The problem is in aviation, everything costs a lot of money. Mm. Yeah, it makes the numbers a little bit harder to read. But I, I mean, I have a big monitor, so for me, I, I can read that quite nicely. So I'm going to leave that on. Love it. So, hey, Alpha. So, Alpha says the ATR is still produced. Okay, interesting. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Have you heard about EVS? On no, I have not heard about that. No. Uh, Oist wonders if the synthetic vision is actually realistic. Good question. So we are doing four miles a minute roundabout. So that'll take us another 22, 23 minutes to Ednock. <laughs> this is just different speeds, isn't it? This thing is almost um, half as fast as an A320. Mm. So I guess G Lander already landed. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, my rule of thumb always goes nicely. The uh, FMS also says 20 minutes from now.
But I think we're going to have less problems landing on that short runway, Reynolds. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I guess in the braking or the brakes on on the uh, 320s here is, is so the ground friction is, is too strong in many cases. So that's why you don't have any issues getting the aircraft to stop really quickly. Yeah, that's that's the difference between you know uh, working out the landing distance performance um, in the calculator and then and then actually um, you know finding out the um, the actual landing distance that you needed. So if you if you land quickly, touch down quickly, you know you go max braking. Pff, yeah, the aircraft stops half the distance. It's just these calculators have all the additionals for us line airline pilots um, because usually we like to you know, land the aircraft nice and soft etc so we we flare a little bit and we don't brake too hard because otherwise the passengers get upset so um yeah Hey, Pot, nice to see you. Sorry for the late call-out early on. Pot, thank you so, so much again. Hope you're doing well. Good evening to you. ATR EVS is an add-on that's like night vision. Ah, okay. Nice. That's also a very cool idea, isn't it? Kind of infrared kind of um, thing. Is there a way to hide the yoke in this plane? Yeah. Click on the lower part of the yoke. There's somewhere it's a click spot. Pretty low ah. E. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Worked. Yeah. So, Pot, how have you been? How was your week up to now? Uh, 
And how do I switch the power management uh, for the approach? Maybe to take off? Yeah. Because when you go around, that's... Uh... Yeah. Okay. Uh, th things are good. Uh, very busy week for me. Glad to. Hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> as you've probably heard, yeah, we, we're busy with renovation work starting now. Tomorrow is going to be weird because tomorrow we're going to take out the stairs to the upper part of the of the house. So I've got to use a normal normal ladder <laughs> to get up and down. It's going to be weird. Hope I don't fall down. And now you go to the restaurant all day because you don't have a kitchen? No, we have our kitchen in the, in the garage now. Oh, interesting. So we, we're going to barbecue and we have a gas cooker in the garage. Freezer. Everything's in the garage now. Yeah, pod. Um, I mean, they have they have since it's five different contractors, so we need you know we need a new ceiling, a new floor. There would be a new kitchen, um, new staircase, new internal doors. Um, so yeah, new paint. New Have you planned uh, everything by yourself? No, no. We, we've got a uh, architect that helps us. Okay. Yeah. So electrician, it's it's a, it's literally half of the house will be completely new. <laughs> it's going to be a kind of a weird thing. How old is the house? Uh, 1980. Okay, not that old. Mm. <laughs> Did you just demolish the entire building is starting from scratch? Hardcore. <laughs> I mean. Honestly, yes. At some point, I thought, you know. <laughs> but then again, I mean, I'm not going to say how much it costs overall, but let's put it this way. There's people that pay more for a, a average German car. That's how expensive cars have become here in Germany. So it's a lot of money that we are paying, but we are getting, like I said, you know, a, a half the house is going to be new. Hey, Christian, I know 1980, so, you know, 44 years, that's not really that old, no. And we actually, we already had some of work done 10 years ago regarding um, making it more um, energy efficient. So the thing is, so let's put it this way. So we had two options. One was to buy a different house and move. But just to give you some calculation, if you buy a house for, let's say, 500,000 euros here in Germany, you have to pay taxes, you have to pay for the commissions, um, and uh, all, all those different costs um, will be about 12, 13, 14% on top. So you're already paying anywhere between 50 to 60,000 euros in commissions, etc., tax and commissions. So we thought, well, and then you you move to an area that you don't know where, you know, how the people are, how your neighbors are around you, and um, you know, is there anything wrong with the house? You know, is there potentially going to be more costs coming up because uh, you know the heating isn't working properly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's so many things, <clears throat> so many variables, and then we thought, well, you know what, we already made the house more efficient um, it's got a new heating system um, you know why go through the risk moving somewhere else we have fantastic neighborhood here a wonderful area that we live in um, yeah exactly so we're also adding value to the to the house by by um, renovating it so um, you know it, it's not going to be we're not going to get all the money that we invest out from from uh, um, value adding but um, 
At least part of it, yeah. Do you already have photovoltaic? No, we don't have that yet. The thing is that our roof, the way it's cut um, up to now, they said it's not really that efficient. But now, since the photovoltaic um, panels are getting more and more powerful and efficient, uh, we'll have a look into that again very soon. Um, Oist, well, here in northern Germany, we are actually, for 500,000 euros, you do actually get quite a nice house. Maybe not in, in the big cities themselves, but um, around the, the, you know, the edges. Um, yeah, 500,000 will get you some, some nice houses here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, taxes here, yeah, I mean, crazy stuff, right? How long until landing? Uh, not that much longer, about 25 minutes, I would say. That's why tour props are better than jets. So you have more time to talk and cruise. <laughs> well, I mean, on the previous flight, we flew the 747 from East Midlands to Keflavik. So we had about two hours, something two hours, 10 flight time. I mean, that was also enough time. We had some, some good uh, discussions there. I liked it. Some great stuff. How do I manage the speed in the approach? Do I go out of these uh, notch and uh, control it by myself, or does it do by the uh, FMS? No, so I, if you want to reduce power, you have to do it with the, the, the levers. Okay. Yeah, larger life. I, I found that by coincidence today. So if you go to the NAF setup here, so press NAF, and then you go to PFD synthetic vision so that's off and then you just put that on thank you much organ aviator thanks for watching yeah you've got a uh, video on demand so you can watch it tomorrow or something if, if you're interested thanks so so uh, much for hanging out take care Yes, it's a nice uh, visual, especially when you've got, uh, you know, you're in clouds. It gives you a nice synthetic, you know, vision of the terrain around you. Very cool indeed. So here's our top drop there, TOD. Due to the high terrain, yeah, we've got to stay high up, so...
How do you like the ATR overall? I mean, for that price, um, it's a nice add-on. Um, so if you enjoy, you know, turbo prop flying, um, I think it has everything to get you, you know, nice and safe from A to B. Does it have bugs? Yeah, it has some bugs. Um, you know, especially if, if you're very familiar with the aircraft, you may find um, some inaccuracies, but all in all. Um, although hand flying, I, if I remember, it was kind of a bit uh, yeah, sensitive again in the pitch axis. But I'll have to try. I'll, I'll tell you once I've, I've landed. I already found a bug because mm -hmm. um, I'm actually in the, in the old altitude hold mode. Mm -hmm. But when I reduced the pre-selected altitude, it starts to descend, which is not correct in my opinion. Okay. Uh, you feel like the plane forms could, could be bigger text, okay? Yeah, I mean, there are some certain routings which um, yeah, this aircraft is made for, right? So especially, you know, Greece, smaller islands, uh, Canary Islands, Norway, or here in, in Colombia with all this, the, you know, the smaller runways. It definitely has its place. How's the ATR cur a learning curve? Well, Peter, for me, what I've done, I went through some lengths getting myself, you know, this. So, you know, where I know where to look for the, the buttons and so on. And the funny thing is, as previous, I looked for the um, landing elevation. I should have just looked at the buttons. Oh, yeah. Then, you know, in the general area where you have to look for these things. So, for example, um, assigned altitude set. Well, that's obviously the autopilot TCAS set below. That's here under survival um, or surveillance. Um, altimeter, right? That's here. Bar set. Pressurization check, obviously, here on the panel. You can go to. Do, 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 do. Actually, hang on, where's pressurization here? Yeah, there we go. Systems. There's pressurization check. So, so many things. Um, and the learning curve is, is steep. You get used to it very quickly. Yes, yeah, I always get that wrong. I always, I always say survival. It's a surveillance. <laughs> so, first, so for me, TCAS has to do with you know survival. Same with GPWS or something. It has to do with survival. Uh, Port rights. He built a house a few years ago. It put monetary penalties in the contract for each day over the rise. Yeah, it's a good good idea, Port. Yeah. Um, so I, I, for me, when I, you know, looked at the time schedule from, from what the architect did. So the architect, um, was referred to us by our neighbors who, you know, made some very good experience with that, uh, architect and up to now, um, the contractors that, um, the architect is working with. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. So keeping fingers crossed. It won't be too much uh, of an issue. Yeah, here, of course, it doesn't have auto thrust. It will set climb power, cruise power, um, go around power for you if you have the levers in that white range there. But uh, otherwise, in descent, yeah, you have to adjust the thrust yourself, yeah. 
Oh yeah, the dust. Yeah, it's gonna be horrible. I'm just gonna make sure that um, I cover my uh, computer here and my displays and so on. Welcome aboard the Captain Black Box Duo Channel hey. Experience. <laughs> Could new subscribers please make their way to the first class cabin, where complimentary drinks, snacks, and premium flight infotainment will be served. Thank you. BB, hope you're doing well even amidst construction. I know it all too well. Thanks always for your streams and YouTube. I can't say how much info and enjoyment I'm getting out of them. Oh, that's really kind. Wasteland Go, thank you so much for the eight months now, and thank you so much for the kind words. That's really, really kind. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Yeah, and if you have any questions, Waste, uh, Wasteland, let me know. Always happy to answer. What's your favorite add-on, Wasteland? Out of curiosity, what do you what do you like? Oh, that's cool. That's good to hear. What what's your favorite aircraft then? No, oh, nice cargo seven three seven eight hundred. Very nice. And what's your favorite area to fly around? The US Midwest, Minneapolis, and FedEx. Ah, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, 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 nice. Right, I've got to make sure that we're going to turn here. No, it's just a flyby. It's a steep turn. Come on. Seems to be treating it more as a flyover. There it is. Now it's turning. Yep. Good. And then we're going to start uh, selecting. Let's put in 13,000 initially. Wait for the top drop coming up there. Let's have a look. Vina. No, it's, it's gone back to, to Alt. I don't have a deviation bar just yet. Is that, is that the issue, maybe? I have a lateral deviation bar, but... Initiate a shallow descent and then press the VNAV button. Then the um, deviation bar appears. Okay. So we've got a very shallow descent here. Yeah, now I'm going to wait until the deviation comes in. Yeah, it should come in very soon. Let's top descend. Uh, you do have one question, yeah. Uh, when you did short haul rotations, or even now, how much time before takeoff do you receive your operational flight plans? Well, we so when we start our duty at the home base, we have on long range 
90 minutes prior to departure. Here's the VDEF bar now. Um, and um, on short range, I think it was 70 minutes. Um, so anyway, in between 90 to 60 minutes before departure, we would get our operational flight plan ready from dispatch. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Yep, there we go. Now we've got VNAV path. Do you have some problems in your airliners uh, with the dust from the deserts? No. Which is up in the air? No. no. So the, there is obviously, if you have like a sandstorm, um, there are certain things you have to consider. So depending on the visibility, um, ranges when you have sandstorms, um, you may have to have some maintenance procedure being done afterwards. But this descent from the desert in the air is not as uh, dangerous as the volcanic ash in the air. Yep, exactly. Um, so it's 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 still you can still have some mechanical issues from it, um, but the the problem with volcanic ash is is that as it gets into the compressor and the air is being compressed and it heats up the volcanic ash acts like glass so oh, it, it okay. kind of melts and then hits the colder fan blades or, or compressor blades and then kind of sticks to the blades and builds up and so the only way really that helps that way is if you if you keep the motor spinning so windmilling and then that's how the 747 for British Airways a long time ago over Indonesia, who, who suffered an engine failure on all four engines due to volcanic ash. As it descended um, and the, the engine cooled down, um, the uh, volcanic ash then hardened and broke off again due to the spinning um, of the rotating of the engine. And said so they were able to restart it at a lower altitude. So volcanic ash is definitely a lot more problematic than sand. Yeah, so for us, Wasteland, um, for us, the dispatchers, um, they, they do everything regarding normal flight planning now. However, to give an example, um, when we flew to... Um, Mon uh, Montreal, the alternate around Montreal, um, like um, Equilit, no, was it Equilit? No, it was. Um, uh, don't remember exactly which airports we had, but they had snowfall as well and and strong winds. So um, the the first airport that didn't have threats was um, Toronto. So I called my dispatcher and asked him to do another flight plan for me. Um, with Toronto as the first alternate airport. And that way I get a proper flight plan regarding you know, the fuel calculations. Um, and uh, yeah, that way um, I also have bit better predictions and I can monitor the fuel situation better. So we are in contact. We, we have a telephone number. We can get in contact with the dispatcher, have some things changed. Uh, but usually they are very good in what they do. They are the experts, really, when it comes to flight planning. Uh, on long-haul flights, uh, when do you request weather? Well, I mean... Oh, that looks really cool. Look at that. Scary. Nice. Um, so in the, in the real aircraft, we always monitor the weather. So, But latest, an hour 30, so 90 minutes on long range, 90 minutes before landing, I would get the weather from the destination and the alternate airports. Um, do a fuel check again, make sure that you know we have good valid plan B. <laughs> no, we don't use SimBrief, no. Although I have to admit, SimBrief is, is actually pretty good. So let's do a recall here. Recall checked. Land elevation is checked. Enough performance set. Minimum is set. Route briefing completed. 
next is approach. Now we're already under um, below 18,000. So let me go and set the bar. That was 1015, if I remember correctly. Hard to see here, 1015. There it is. So 14,000 above for around a corner we come. I'm going to put the land lights on now. Oh, they were on. Test, 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 test. And you can press the approach button before the final approach fix, and it works with the descent. Nice. Okay, so I don't know why it didn't work. Uh, maybe they changed something. Maybe. But I dialed down the uh, altitude selector. I don't know. Maybe it has to do with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put 11,700 feet now. That's the um, the final approach altitude. Yeah, that's the symbol for it. Maltese cross there. So out selector 11.7. Now, I have a somewhere a chart that's normal takeoff standard approach okay hmm. so I'm going to put this to takeoff now Oh, sorry, he said uh, once the landing gear goes out, this is out. So once we get the landing gear out, then we put this to take off. Let's get going. So you have to arm the approach at least two miles before the final approach fix. Okay, interesting. Okay, we shall do so. Uh, and it should arm VFP. Okay, we can configure the 765-654. Flap, gear flap, okay. Thank you. Let me just go again at uh, performance. 117 is going to be approach speed later on. You know, so so wasteland for for flight simming, I do use Simbrief, yeah, but not for real world. <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure our sim, our dispatchers don't use Simbrief. <laughs> they, have, they have some more expensive programs for that. So here we go, twelve thousand above. Then uh, so six. So then we go down to eleven seven. So that's 10 miles to that waypoint. That looks good. So the maximum speed, I think I've noted those down as well. So 185 to get the flaps to 15 gear also at 185 and then 30 we've got to be below 550 knots cool. excellent excellent so one uh, let me just 185 150 okay
Good. So let me arm the approach mode now. Do I have to dial down the, the altitude then to the minimums or... So that would be 9,000... That's hard to read. 9,100... No, once... Okay. Okay, so I'll leave it at 11.7. Okay. Let's see. 11.7. Let's slow down here. For the final descent. Descent angle is 3.5 degrees, so not too bad. Good. Approach checklist. Seatbelts on. Landing weight. Uh, landing lights on. Altimeter set and checked. Cabin altitude is checked. That will stay at pretty much 8,000 something now. And next will be before landing. So I'm trying to get below 185. Here it is, flaps 15. are on. So now we should intercept that final path as well. Okay, cool. Reynold has landed? Yes, landed, but it was not the best, my best landing. Okay, no worries. So the flare was too late and so I touched on hard. Okay, so V, FP is set. That's engaged. So now we go... 14,000 14, for missed approach. Is set. Yeah, so maybe that's what I did wrong. Maybe I armed the approach mode too late the last time. Gears coming down. And now I have to get below 150 to get the flaps out. 30, there it is. There's the runway. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. Let's have a look for the checklist then. Anything else to do? Cabin crew advised. Go on to the landing gear down. Department check takeoff. There we go. Flaps 30 landing. Okay. Let's have uh, before landing checklist. Cabin crew advised. Landing gears down. Flaps. 30 degrees checked, power match takeoff, icing not needed, external lights all on, procedure completed. All right, let's do some hand flying, shall we? Manual flight. Your damper, I guess, off for landing. Yeah, that's what I remember. It's very, very kind of sensitive in the pitch axes, right? Wow, look at that uh, that hill here. That is not uh, <laughs> not too much uh, buffer there. Approaching minimum. So no your damper for landing. Cool. Thank you much. Yeah, runway is inside. Minimum. Continue. Nice wasteland, yeah, enjoy. Let me know how it was. That is actually pretty cool. That's a beautiful approach. Amazing.
So as much as I enjoyed the 747 landing in uh, Keflavik, but I have to admit, this is also very nice. Very scenic. So we are in beta, so I'm not applying any brake, pedal pressure, just uh, beta power. Right, where's my apron? <laughs> Did I already pass it? I'll turn around on the other side. Okay, <laughs> already. Nice. What, 300? That didn't feel like 300 feet per minute. That can't be right. This is sometimes because the runway isn't flat. Mm. Then the measure measurement is completely wrong. Yeah. Felt quite nice, so... Very nice. That was cool. Enjoyed that. Although it got a bit late again, unfortunately. <laughs> Could you maybe show, after uh, parking, um, how to activate the prop brake for the right side? Yeah. I'll do So I'm just going through all of the items here. Thank you much, James. Uh, ensure gust lock in to... Oops. Feather into... Feather and prop brake switch to on. Okay. On engine two, okay. Let me just uh, have a look. So trim set to plus one. Set probe and window heat. Oh, no, not this. That off. So after landing, radar off, or standby flight controls locked, flaps zero, trims three axis set, strobe lights landing off, anti ice is off, probe heats off, TRU off. Okay, there we go. Is off. And that's the. So after at least two minutes, we'll do that. Park next to Brynold here. Let's park here. Brakes on. <coughs> so, after two minutes, CL1, feather, then fuel shutoff. So, let's say. So both to feather, okay? Both to feather. So then, on the outward panel, brake to off. Now prop brake is set. Here goes. So one of the props is now. So one fuel shut off. Shut off, there it is.
Hey, your right prop is stopped. My yep. right prop is still running. I did the same like you. So he feathered. He feathered, then uh, prop break is on. So the blue light is on as well, prop break? Uh, no, it's, uh, it says ready, not the blue light. Okay. Maybe I switch the prop break off, mm -hmm. then on? No. Oh, there. Are. Yes, no. No, okay. it says prop break. Nice. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So the weird thing is now, it's just so weird. He only switched off one engine, right? So, I mean, the props don't turn anymore. So, you know, but internally, the engine is still running. So I yeah. guess it's a bit like APU now. But I think there can't be any person sucked into the turbine. No, that's true. So let me just switch that off. Uh, none. None. Cool. And uh, so that's done. And then parking, park brake engage, lights all off, wing light, volume, yeah, that's off. Um, that's feather beacon off, transponder standby, tail prop on. Okay. So aircraft, tail prop. So ground crew hates hotel mode. Yeah, cause it's loud, isn't it? But we've only ever had one prop break fail. And okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. If the prop break fails and the and the prop starts turning, oof, not so nice. So seat belts off. Cool. If new leg, no. If leave aircraft. Cut. That's really cool. Thanks so much. So this is also V pilot scenery, but it's a very it's a more basic one um, compared to to the Sierra Kilo Uni from India departure airport. But nonetheless, um, it's a fascinating place to fly to. Beautiful approach here with the uh, terrain around. Look at that that lake. Very nice. It's very pretty. Yeah. James, thank you so much for all the inputs. Learned a lot today. Big round of applause, and also to you and happy landings. Thank you much, James. So, Brendan, I know you have to get to bed. You've got to work tomorrow, right? So yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. So, thank you so much for flying along, Brendan. Always a lot more fun when you are flying along. Same for uh, Gilend. Also to you. Thank you so much for flying along. Yeah. Good night, everyone. I will see you on Sunday if you like. More preparations going on um, for the cross the pond. Big thank you to all the support coming in. Thanks for all the gifted subs. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you very, very soon. Good night. Take care.